you would join us. Hey Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, we're going to take the next probably six videos to review the entire wave of Skeleton Crew Black Series figures. You see it's nice to have them in hand. It's actually really nice to have a set of figures out before the show even airs. It hasn't happened for what feels like a very long time. So very excited to get to know these characters in the show just under a couple of weeks. So by the time I finish with all these reviews, um, we won't be too far off at all. Um, but I'm going to start from six because this one is the coolest looking mf -er in the lot. Um, and I'm really excited about busting this guy open. It is Pirate Captain Brutus Port Borgo. So we're about to find out a little bit more about the pirates. You know, I have, I have strong beliefs that Hondo Inaka is going to show up. But I like the uh, I like the yellow they've used for this show. This is a great looking figure. Each of the uh, the boxes has the same little write up for Skeleton Crew. If you want to have a read, you can. And I'll hold it back so you can freeze frame and check out all the other languages. Like I said, number six. We got the picture there of Brutus. So given we're going to start with this one, let's bust him open and take a look. Before I start, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. This is the way. All right, here is Brutus, and he is a absolutely awesome looking figure. Yeah, he's jumped straight, just taking him out of the packaging, he's jumped straight into my top 10 for the for 2024. Not sure where, but we'll figure that out <laughs> as we go along. Yeah, this guy is sick. Uh, yeah, this is what you expect from, you know, an alien pirate in the Star Wars universe. He has five different guns, blasters, sorry. So we'll get a quick look at these. I'm not sure, he's got three holsters on his belt, he has one around the back, and then he has one on the front there so we're going to figure out exactly where they go throughout the course of the review but a lot they're definitely like got that sort of pirate musket sort of vibe to them with the curved handles which is something i really like so that's cool there's one there's another one here so this guy, yeah, being a pirate is never going to be short of weapons to uh, to keep keep him going. Here's another one. Oh, I love that they've got that little bit of extra paint detail, you know, the brown for the wooden handle and then some of the gold accents on it. I think that's really, really nice. Looks fantastic. And we got this one here. And again, some little silver, silver accents on it and then... Sort of a goldy bronze on the end there. So that's cool. And then last but not least, we have this big, big chunky, chunky pistol here. So that's cool. So yeah, as far as where they go on him, let's try and work it out. So I will go through the figure and then we'll take a look at where the weapons go. Because <laughs> that's a, it's a big job. I'd rather look through the figure first. So we'll start from the top, the uh, head sculpt. Now this is unreal. This is uh, very much, you know, a nice sort of modern rendition of, um, you know, the character, the, the glup shito that everyone is obsessed with now, Ali El Shus, the one that didn't quite make the Cantina has lab, but people are still begging for it. It's like, ah, oh, well, we probably should have backed. Probably more people probably should have backed it, but. That's all right. I'm sure they'll do him if there's enough fan demand. But uh, yeah, I love the look of this guy. Red eyes. You know, this guy fits in with that original sort of cantina look. You know, you can put this guy on your New Hope shelf if if this is the only figure you're going to get from the skeleton crew. He will work. He will work in the cantina scene. He will work in Jabba's palace. He's just a a cool looking dude. Brutus, with a name like Brutus. Yeah, paint job's excellent. The sculpt of the head is unreal. More of the big ears sort of hanging out the top. You can kind of just see in the top there where the seam is, so there's a back and front of the figure. Even the neck has some fur on it. The teeth are painted nicely. We'll go through to his outfit. 
It looks good. Some like furs and feathers and stuff sort of placed throughout. Just all the details of all the buckles and stuff. Yeah, you, know, you can probably add a little bit of bit of copper, sort of bronze, sort of paint to some of the buckles or something as well, if you really wanted to, just to give it that little bit of flair. Um, for the most part, this guy's going to be standing on a shelf, so you're probably not going to see the back of him too much. But yeah, love the love the Star Warsy look to the to the belt. All the all the little bits and pieces, the buckles, the the little gadgets there on the belt. Focuses, come on. You got some like bits and pieces of armor, armor on his upper shoulder there. Straps around the arms. I love that sort of bronze. So just the, even the little gold accent there is just. It's enough, it just pops, it just gives gives it that little bit of extra life. I think that's really, really nicely done. Down the sort of bottom here of his I'm trying to decide whether it's a it's more of a karma, isn't it? Like a and a skirt, because it sort of just wraps around the back. But yeah, it's looking particularly good. It's a bit of weathering down the side. The sort of dirt at the bottom of the coat, I think they look good. They're sort of multi layered, so it doesn't hinder the articulation. If it was one piece, you know, you'd be, you'd feel probably a little hindered, but you know, you can get it's a nice, soft, malleable plastic, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna get in the way, which is fantastic. And the boots, nicely painted, those sort of flashes of sort of that brown, brownie orange. Orangey brown, <clears throat> but yeah, I love the sort of the earthy tones, the like the browns, the the red of the pants, the sort of sort of ready brown of the belts, it goes with the brown of the fur. Very sort of earthy, I guess. Gives it a little bit of a. I don't know. I can't describe what I'm trying to say. And I'd say the one one little issue I'm picking up here is the fur colour of his hands. They're just sort of a grey, but um, no sort of extra paint detail. I would have assumed that his hands, the fur on his hands would match sort of the fur on the head. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm just, just pointing out what it is. So let's figure out where these blasters go. So this one is quite... You know, I might end up looking at some source material, but that one looks like it fits in there really nicely. It's sort of longer, and that does. It slides in there very beautifully. Now, I reckon this one should probably accommodate this larger, larger blaster there. And it does. It fits in there nicely. So then we're left with these. I'm going to say the smaller one. At the top there. I'm just going to try and use this as a guide, and that looks to be the case. And we've got this bigger one with the emitter there on the front. And even on the artwork, it's just sort of resting above. A little bit of heat might be able to loosen that belt up just to sort of get it in a little more. And that leaves one more. And that looks to be the same one on the on the picture, so I think we worked that out pretty well. So yeah. Freaking cool man. I <laughs> this is the one I was excited for the most as soon as they showed this and even even some of the leaked prototypes. For this figure, it was like, wow, this guy's strapped. Got the gear. Yeah, he looks, he looks like a space pirate. Feels like a space pirate. Yeah, and seeing this figure just adds a little bit more excitement to the show. Uh, Articulation-wise, he does have a ball joint in the head. So double ball joint in the head. Ball joint at the top bottom of the neck too. So you get a good range of movement without any ugly joints. 
uh, ball hinges in the shoulders, got the butterfly joint in there too, ball hinges in the elbows, get a nice nice range of movement there. Uh, the hands are the ball and socket hands, so they're nice and tucked in there, you get a little bit of wriggle room, which is good. Uh, there is a torso joint at the bottom of the torso there behind the belt, so everything's nice and nice and hidden away in there, which is what I love. I got the barbell at the hips. You have ball hinges in the knees, ball hinges in the ankles, and then the rocker joint in the foot. And uh, yeah, going to use the uh, trusty uh, KR stand here. And get in that peg hole. I'm definitely going to be using these to stand these figures up. So I'm um, Sci-Fi did a little bit of a video on our KR stands the other day. Go check out his. Um, safe to say he was pretty happy with them, which is great to see. I love seeing our stands out there in the open. But there is a uh, pirate captain Brutus. Yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to finding a little little shelf to start displaying these characters. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. Yeah, love to hear what your thoughts are. Drop a comment down below. Next up, we're going to be looking at KB. And uh, we'll be making our way back through to number one. Until then, may the force be with you always.